Here we're asked to use the graph of function f of x, graphed here in red, to determine the values here on the right. Notice two of these involve the function f, and two involve the inverse of function f. To evaluate f of two, we need to recognize that this two is the input, or the x value, for function f. So looking at the graph of function f, Here's the x value of positive two. So if we go up to the function, so if we go up to the function, we can use this point right here to determine the function value. Notice the x coordinate is two and the y coordinate is positive four. Well the y coordinate is our function value or the output for the function when x is two, therefore f of two equals four. Let's also record this information in this table here for the table of values for f of x. When x equals two, the output or function value is four. Next we're told if f of x equals two, determine the value of x. Well here, two is the output or the y value of the function. So going back over to our graph, now we want to find where the y coordinate equals two. Well the y coordinate is equal to two right here on the y axis. The coordinates of this point would be zero, two. So when the function value or y value is positive two, the x value or input is equal to zero. So if f of x equals two, then x equals zero. Again, if we want to record this information in a table of values, we would have x equals zero, and y or the function value is equal to positive two. Now the reason I wanted to record this information in a table is because if we complete a table of values for the inverse function, it'll help us answer these last two questions involving the inverse of function f. Remember f and f inverse undo each other, so if the input for function f is two and the output is four, then if the input for the inverse function is four, then the output would be equal to two. If the input for f is zero and the output is two, then if the input is two for the inverse function, the output would be zero. So we can see these two functions are undoing each other. So looking at these last two, to evaluate f inverse of two, we need to recognize that this two here is the input into the inverse function, and we want to determine the output or function value. So looking at this table of values for the inverse function, notice when the input is two, or x equals two, the output is zero. So f inverse of two is equal to zero. If we wanted to find this value using the graph, we'd have to recognize that for the inverse function, this y coordinate or function value would be the input, and the x coordinate or zero would actually be the output. And that can be a little tricky at first, and that's why it's often helpful to record the information about the inverse function in a different table. Looking at the last question, if f inverse of x equals two, meaning if the output of the inverse function is equal to positive two, we want to determine the x value. So again, looking at our table of values for the inverse function, notice if the output for the inverse function is two, the input or x value is equal to positive four. Again, looking back at the graph, we'd have to recognize that if f inverse of x equals two, this two here would be the output of the inverse function, and the input would equal this four here. There is one more important connection I'd like to make. If we take a look at this first question and this last question, there is a connection. Notice when the input into the function f is two, the output is four, and if the output of the inverse function is two, then the input is equal to four. This information here is the same information we have here in this first row of these two tables. And then this question here and this question here are also related. For function f, if the output is two, the input is zero. And for the inverse function, if the input is two, the output is zero. These two questions here emphasize the relationship between the function f from these two rows here. I hope you found this helpful.